Hi, I'm Kathy Flynn and welcome back to Thriving with Autism. Today we're going to talk about reinforcement. Anything your child likes is known as a reinforcer. That means it can be used to give your child what he or she wants after a task is completed or a direction is followed. Please don't misunderstand the significance of this transaction. This is not a bribe. This is a way to establish motivation. Your child needs to be motivated to sit with you and interact and follow directions and eventually work on behaviors and skills. The favorite item or reinforcer is used for this purpose. Trust me on this one. It is rooted in scientific work and has been proven time and time again with students. It works really well. So let's review the terminology in applied behavior analysis. Positive reinforcement is the addition of a reinforcing stimulus following a behavior, making that behavior more likely to occur again in the future. Here is an example. When you call your child and he or she looks at you, you give him or her a small piece of a cookie and say, nice looking. Always praise your child with the exact behavior that you liked, that you want to continue. In this case, your child's eye contact. If you give a reinforcer every time your child looks, the likelihood is that your child will work hard to look at you in the future to get more pieces of cookie. Of course, we can change the behavior and the reinforcement here, but this is just an example. The reinforcement has to be something your child really loves, and that can change all the time. That is why it is important to have a list of what your child likes. If cookies worked yesterday, they may not work today. So it is important to use different reinforcers if one is not getting the you the result that you're looking for. Also, if you're using food, always break up the food into tiny pieces. You do not give away full cookies. Your child will then overeat throughout the course of the day and he or she may also become satiated. That means that he or she has had so much of that reinforcer in any given time period that it becomes less valuable and your child will likely push it away. You will not likely get much work done if you lose your child's motivation. So that's when it's time to switch it up. When your child with autism is emergent and working on very simple skills, reinforcement is a huge way to get him or her to sit with you, interact with you and give you eye contact. But reinforcement can also be used as you work on more advanced skills like requesting, imitation, receptive language, and following simple commands. Just a quick note that reinforcement does not always need to be food. Edible reinforcement is a primary reinforcer and is considered valuable because children are very motivated by their favorite snack, especially if it's candy or chocolate. However, let me be clear that you should always be looking to find other reinforcers that work well so that you are not always using food. Other sources of reinforcement can be jumping on a mini trampoline, bouncing on a yoga ball, watching a few minutes of a favorite video on YouTube, tickles, or even access to a favorite toy like putty or a koosh ball. Eventually, you want your reinforcers to be less tangible and more abstract. This means you want them to not have to be something your child can hold all the time. Work up to being able to use social praise as a reinforcer as well. Like simply saying, nice work, buddy. I like the way you used your words. Here is an important note about reinforcement. It is super important to lessen the amount of reinforcement over time. This means that as your child becomes more compliant and is able to follow your directions and do more skills, you do not want to give a reinforcer for every single direction or skill. You want to vary the reinforcement so that your child does not know when it's coming. You can build up the number of minutes before you give a reinforcer, or you can build up the number of tasks your child has to do before getting access to the reinforcer. Okay, <laughs> I could talk about reinforcement for hours, but just to keep this video on the shorter end, let's talk about one more thing. Be very careful that you are not accidentally reinforcing your child for negative behavior. I know you're probably thinking, why would I do that? But it definitely happens. A prime example of this is when a child is tantruming for a lollipop in the grocery store because you said no. Autistic or not, of course this happens with neurotypical children as well. After a few embarrassing moments and a few stares, that you give over the lollipop to quiet your child. What has the child learned in this case? 
If I scream and cry, I can still get what I want. You have just accidentally reinforced a tantrum. The next time you need or want to say no, your child will just scream louder and longer until you give in. No should be no and that is it. Never give in. Reinforcement can be tricky, but just remember a few rules for now. When you reinforce your child, do it immediately after you get a desired behavior and label that behavior so that your child knows that he or she is getting this item because of that behavior. Like, great job showing me quiet hands, here's your slime. Always use a varied amount of reinforcers as you work with your child so that he or she does not become satiated on any one of them. And also, be careful not to reinforce negative or unwanted behaviors like crying, biting, hitting, etc. We will talk more about behaviors in another video, but just know that when your child engages in aggression, all reinforcements that are being used at that moment should be removed. This is considered a punishment, but it also works really well. You do not want to accidentally reinforce negative behavior. Until next time, this is Thriving with Autism, and I'm Kathy Flynn. I'll be back on Wednesday for Wednesday's Q&A.